researchers, colleagues, and uh, students. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I, on behalf of the faculty uh, and the organizing committee, I would like to thank you for, you for the speakers who are willing to deliver this speech in these special events uh, and who also share their valuable experience. Uh, I do hope that uh, this webinar is able to foster and empower the lecturer, students, and staff through the arts of for harvest technology in horticultural product, as you will present it today. Uh, I do hope this event can also be a starting point from both institutions for further research collaborations regarding for harvest technology. And this is also in line with, with one of our main purpose uh, of our institutions, which is to produce excellence graduates in the agriculture technology oriented towards uh, the development of environmentally friendly agro-industry, including for post technology. So finally, uh, I wish you a successful and a fruitful discussions to all of you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind uh, attentions and thank you very much for everyone, everyone who are attend this uh, seminar. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for Mr. Robby and Doyo for giving the opening speech. Ladies and gentlemen, the next session is the main session that will be guided by our moderator. But first, let me introduce our moderator today. So the operator, please uh, show this curriculum vitae. Okay, she is Mrs. Miss Azri Widiasanti, STP Master of Engineering. She is one of our lecturer at Agricultural Engineering Study Program, Universitas Pajajaran. Uh, her, uh, her, she was got her bachelor degree in Agricultural Engineering, Universitas Gajah Mada. Uh, she got her master degree in Food Engineering and Bioprocess Technology. ASEAN Institute of Technology, Thailand. Currently, she is a student in Agro-Industrial Technology on Universitas Pajajaran for her PhD degree. Uh, for your information, her research mostly about post-harvest and processing engineering, also about essential oil processing. Her recent scientific publication on 2021 are characterization of liquid soap from castor oil with the addition of white tea extract and isolation of wine from crude and distilled petroleum oil extracted by molecular distillation. On 2019, her scientific publication was isolation of wine from petroleum pogostemon cablin bands using vacuum fractionation, fractionation distillation. Without further ado, to Miss Asri Widiasanti, the time is yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Allow me in this opportunity to welcome all of these general lecture participants by first praying our grateful and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his blessing, grace, and mercies that have made us possible to gather here in this virtual room in excellent health condition. Respectable the Dean, Faculty of Agro-Industrial Technology, Mrs. Sarifah Nurjana, the Vice Dean of the Academic Affair, Mr. Robi Andoyo, the Honorable All Lecturers of the Agricultural Engineering, Food Technology, and Agricultural Industrial Technology Programs, dear distinguished guests, students, and the honorable all participants of these general lectures. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Asri Widya Santi, and I will be the moderator. I'm very pleased to see you here and welcome all of you to the general lecture. Today's session is about the art of post-harvest technologies in horticultural products. And for your information, before this lecture begins, let me inform how the presentation will be going on. Uh, we will have presentation until the next two hours. Each of speakers will talk around 40 minutes. And after all the speakers have presented their topics, 
we will have discussion for about 20 minutes. So if you have any question, feel free to ask directly by raise hand features, or you may type your question in the chat box. All right, we have two speakers who already with us. Okay, I'm going to invite our first speaker. Sawadika, kun sabaydi mai. Dr. Sukhiwal Seta. Yes, sawadika. Hello, good morning, everyone. Yes, morning. And then Sabaydi. Uh, first of all, I will read her profile. Please, operator. Dr. Sukhiwal Seta. She is a lecturer in Post Harvest Technology Program. School of Agro Industry, Maifaluang University, Chiang Rai, since 2007. Her expertise is in post-harvest technology. Her research interest is mainly about application of plant growth regulator to extend storage life and reduce chilling injury in tropical fruits. Then innovative post-harvest treatment for maintaining quality of fruits, stress oxidative, antioxidant, and so on. For her educational background, okay, maybe the before this slide, okay. She has received her bachelor degree from Ram Kang University. Then she graduated master degree in King Mongkut University Technology, Thonburi, Thailand. In 2005, she pursued her doctoral degree in Hiroshima Prefectural University. She is also got postdoctoral fellow in the same university. And her professional career is as visiting professor in Faculty of Agricultural Kagoshima University, Japan. Okay, for the next slide. Okay, she has published more than 15 papers in reputable journal. Uh, here are the list of selected papers which related to today's lecture. The latest publication are low intensity of high pressure processing increases extractable recovery of polyphenol and antioxidant activities of non astringent persimmon. Then second is post harvest UV irradiation influence cellular structure, jasmonic acid accumulation, and resistance against green mold decay in satsuma mandarin fruits. Next. She's also received many research funding during her career. Okay, yeah. Now, allow me to welcome the first speaker, Ms. Dr. Sutiwal, to deliver her presentation. Well, you have 40 minutes, Kun, so please. Thank you very much for your introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm very great. It is my great pleasure to be here this morning to join your uh, general lectures today. And thank you very much for the, the organizing, organizing committee to invite me to join your uh, special lecture today. So may I share my slide? So can, can you see my slide? Yes. Already. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay. So today I would like to share my experience about post harvest technologies of horticultural products in Thailand. And I will show you a case study in pineapples and mango fruits. So this is the outline of my talk today. So first of all, let me introduce a bit about my universities. So Ma Fa Luong University is located in the Chiang Rai province, the northernmost of Thailand, close to our campus, close to Laos and Myanmar. So our university, it's quite new university. We just only 20 years old. 
and very new universities. So um, at Chiang Rai cities, we have an important uh, economic cop, including the pineapples. So we have a uh, specific variety of pineapples and very unique. Even Thailand, we can produce or uh, and a pineapples or allow countries, but in Chiang Rai, we have two varieties uh, that being considered as a geographical indicators of Chiang Rai. So for the first one, it is a Pula varieties, the baby pineapples, and another one, it is a Nang Le pineapples. So today I would like to share you my uh, experience on post harvest technologies working with the pineapples. Yes, so this is the Pula pineapples. The difference of this variety from pineapples uh, from the, the other variety of pineapple produced in Thailand because uh, the fruit is a uh, very small. This is the weight of the fruit is allowed 150 to 1000 grams and the skin is lighter thick. Nah so the fruit has yellow and green yellow when the fruit is live. The flesh is yellow and very crispy and aromatic. Nah the claw is crispy and edible. This is the quite um, unique characteristic of this variety of pineapples. And the fruit had low acid concentrations with a sweetness about 14 to uh, sometimes almost 20 bricks. So this is the characteristic of the fruit. So as you know, uh, pineapple is uh, contain a lot of nutritional values and also bioactive compounds, including calcium, potassium, carbohydrate, crude fiber, and minerals. And it contains a lot of bioactive compounds, for example, uh, vitamin C, bromelain, phenolic acid. And this compound can help to prevent the disease in human, for example, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. So that's why uh, we interested to do research these varieties of pineapples. So from our study, because we have uh, two specific varieties produced in Chiang Rai. So uh, I have uh, compared the bioactive compound and, and high oxidant cap, uh, capacities of uh, Pula and Nang Le pineapples. Uh, from the study, we, we found that Pula contain uh, very high vitamin C contents and having high uh, beta carotene and phenolic compounds if compared with another varieties. So, and uh, from my study, uh, I collect pineapple varieties all around the countries. Okay. So this is the main uh, commercial pineapple variety produced in Thailand. And uh, I found that Pula varieties contain quite high amount of beta carotenes and also uh, dietary fiber, including soluble dietary fiber and insoluble dietary fiber. And it contains quite high amount of the bromelain uh, activities if compared with the other commercial varieties. So um, because the fruit have a lot of uh, nutritious, have a lot of nutrition values, has a specific test so they have a potential for export to the foreign country as well so right now we also export uh, pula pineapples to several countries mainly uh, we export to china but anyway because of there are some post harvest problems of the fruits such like uh, other tropical fruits as well because the fruit has a uh, short storage life and some chewing injuries occurring during long-term storage in the low temperatures and some uh, pest and disease problem. So this is the picture of Pula pineapples after harvest. 
นะคะ so normally we harvest uh, when the fruit turn to yellow about 20% for the domestic consumption but for exportations we harvest at the green mature stage so after harvest it is a non p i a t e r i c fruit but it turns to yellow color when it uh, the The changes has been, uh, the quality has been changed very fast after harvest. So this are uh, the picture of the fruit uh, after harvest and store at room temperatures for two weeks. So the fruit uh, turn to uh, dark yellow color. But anyway, if we store the fruit at the low temperatures, for example, store at 13 degrees Celsius, it can delay the ripening, delay the the quality changes of the fruit. However, if we store the fruit under low temperatures for a very long time, for example, two weeks or three weeks, the problem is it. Taste and actually can be o c k l i n g e d to the fruit, especially the internal browning symptoms. So this is a big problem for pineapple fruit uh, during storage at low temperatures. So normally we store uh, pineapple fruit uh, from 10 to 13 degrees Celsius, something like that, and uh, for uh, pula pineapples, uh, the chilling symptom has been observed. Uh, after store for two weeks, so and this one, if uh, we store for longer three or four weeks, the internal browning has been uh, developed severe like this. And um, the next problem it is a pest and disease. So we still have a, a problem with uh, the pest, uh, especially it's come from before harvest of the fruit, and for the disease. So we uh, normally found the the fungi infected to the cutting area on the stem or or the cow of the fruit. This is also the, the, the main problem for post h a r v e s t A problem for the post h a r v e s t technology have been applied using post h a r v e s t similar post h a r v e s t technology for pineapple fruit. So for the first one, I will introduce you the simple uh, treatment that has been worked with a. Uh, Pineapples, so it is an anoxic treatment. So anoxic treatments mean that uh, the fruit has been kept in the environment that without oxygen for a short period. Uh, and these techniques, uh, it is an inexpensive techniques. It's quite simple and non-using chemical technologies. So I have tried this technique with uh, p u l e our pineapples, uh, by after harvest the fruit and then put the fruit, uh, the fruit in the plastic closed plastic chambers, and after that, uh, the the air in the plastic chamber has been removed by flow and oxygen. To the plastic chambers and remove an oxygen. So uh, during removing of oxygen tanks, I have monitor uh, the amount of oxygen inside the box. Just only for a few minutes after flow and oxygen. So oxygen in the tank has been uh, reduced to almost. A zero percent oxygen. So, in order to prevent the water loss during the treatment, so I throw a nitrogen gas through the waters in order to humidify, uh, increase the moisture contents in a uh, in the plastic tanks like this. So, in this study, I have tried anoxic treatment for 12, 24, and 14 hours. Uh, at 25 degrees Celsius, and then leave continuous flow of the nitrogen like this. So after finish the treatment, uh, the the plastic box has been opened, and then take the fruit and uh, store uh, put the fruit in the PP bags, poly p r o t e i n bags, and then store at 10 degrees Celsius. 
So, and then I take the, the quality changes of the fruit. So this is the, the result show that after store at 10 degrees Celsius for 28 day plus moving the fruit to 25 degrees Celsius for three days. So because sometimes chilling injury, we cannot observe during store the fruit under the low temperature. Once you move the fruit to the higher temperature, um, you can may observe the severity of the fruit like this. So uh, by this treatment, I found that uh, using 24 hours of anoxia treatment has been uh, can reduce the internal browning very significantly uh, uh, observed if compared with the control. But uh, at the 48 hour of anoxic treatment, it didn't work to use with uh, Pula pineapple. So I select the, the suitable conditions for anoxic treatment at the 24 hours. So uh, because of uh, several studies show that an anoxic treatment uh, can reduce the browning because it can induce the enzymatics and non-enzymatics antioxidant activities. And um, some studies said that anoxic stress can induce the production of antioxidant status in the cell. So it can influence to protect cells from the stress condition, including chilling injury. So this is a group of enzymes that involved in uh, antioxidant system. For example, superoxide dismutase, it can convert superoxide and ion, the free radicals converted to uh, hydrogen peroxide. And after that, uh, enzyme catalase can convert hydrogen peroxide to water. So, and this one, it's safe to the pan cell. Ascorbate peroxidase as well can convert hydrogen peroxide to water. So for the next study, I would like to investigate the role of anoxic treatments on reducing internal browning in pineapples and also would like to see the effect of treatment on antioxidant capacity to the fruit. So for the study, so I did the same with the last experiment, uh, harvest the fruit and then put in the plastic tank like this. So, and then uh, I did uh, anoxic treatment by 24 hours continuous flow of a pure nitrogen like this. And after that, uh, combine with the, uh, the bags, the polypropylene bags, and then put in the, uh, the paper box, the corrugated box, and store at 10 degrees Celsius, and sampling every seven days until four weeks. And after that, move the fruit to 25 degrees for three days. So the study showed that uh, the apples is the, the control and the lower is 24 hour anoxic treatment. So, and I found that, uh, so after four weeks started at 10 degrees Celsius, uh, the fruit didn't show the, the internal browning at least compared with the control fruit. And when we move the fruit to the higher temperature, it still uh, didn't show any internal browning symptoms to the fruit like this. So by using this condition, it means that I can extend uh, the solid life of the fruit to, for a month without any and internal browning like this. And also this is our show the, the browning score. So really uh, significantly difference between the control and 24 hour anoxic treatment. And when uh, analyzed for the, uh, the amount of hydrogen peroxide, the free radicals, so uh, it showed that uh, anoxic treatment can reduce the amount of hydrogen peroxide if compared with the control. And for the MDA, it is the marrow aldehyde. Uh, it, this is the main uh, product for lipid peroxidation. So, uh, and I found that uh, by anoxic treatments, so it maintain the lower amount of MDA 
especially when we move the fruit to the higher temperature if compared with the control ones. So, and for the enzymes activities, so, and I found a super oxide dismute test, uh, not uh, significantly different if compared with the control and anoxic treatment, but for catalyst activities, so it uh, showed the higher activities of catalyst than the, the control treatment. So it is uh, corresponded with the, the amounts of hydrogen peroxide as well. You know? So because of a higher amount, a higher activity of catalyst can reduce hydrogen the amount of hydrogen peroxide in the food that why can prevent the damage of the, the pineapple during a low temperature storage. In terms of bioactive compounds, I analyzed for the changes of vitamin C and glutathione. For the vitamin C, it shows significantly different. Uh, treated food with anoxia maintain the higher uh, level of vitamin C than uh, the, the control treatments. But for uh, glutathione, it's increased uh, at the end of the storage at the low temperatures and then the drop to the same, almost the same amount with the control treatments. Uh -huh. So this study also analyzed for antioxidant activities of the fruit. Uh, so it showed that uh, anoxic treatment can maintain uh, a little bit higher uh, antioxidant activities if compared with the control treatments. So from this study, it can conclude that short-term anoxic treatment for 24 hours can reduce internal brownings and maintain the qualities uh, of polar pineapples due to inducing the antioxidant activities, antioxidant enzymes activities, maintain the membrane integrity maintenance. So uh, that's why this treatment can reduce the internal brownings of the pineapple fruits. So for the next uh, study, last year I did experiments on the supply chain management of the fresh pula pineapples uh, for to South Korea. So uh, Korea is one of the important uh, exporters country. Uh, we export uh, several agricultural products from Thailand to to South Korea. And pineapple also is one of the fresh fruits that being allowed import to Korea uh, after durians, coconut, uh, banana, mangoes, and mangoes teens. So uh, Korea is quite new market for pineapples, but recently there is a demand for pula pineapple as well. But uh, because of some, still we still have some post harvest problem for pineapple, as I already mentioned. Not only the changes uh, of post harvest quality, but also um, the packaging for transportation and distribution also still have some problem. So in this project, I have a people who are expert in the. Packaging design, uh, packaging transportation distribution join in this uh, project as well. So for the objective of this project has to develop the appropriate post harvest procedures and practices for export of the fresh pula pineapples uh, by air and sea transportation to South Korea. Because we have never been uh, study we have never been researched before. So if we would like to export uh, pula pineapples to Korea like this, uh -huh. so what we have to do with our fruit? So um, we start from selecting the orchard. Uh -huh. So, and the orchard uh, must be certified by good agricultural practice. Uh -huh. So this is the, the farmers, 
uh, the, the orchard owner that I work with him. Uh, so and he also an owner of the the local uh, company. Uh, so and this company has uh, been certified by GMP Codex, uh, HASAP Codex, and also good hygiene practice as well. Uh, so after I select the orchard, select uh, the company, the packing house who gonna join with this project. Uh, so and then we develop the uh, the procedures, the practice that has been used to uh, used with Pula pineapple in order to export to Korea. Uh -huh. So the first one, uh, the maturity index of the fruits also very important. So for export, so we uh, observe that the mature green state is good is better than the 20% yellowings like this, if would like to prolong the storage life of the fruit. And for the sweetness of the fruit, it should be, it must be uh, higher than 12 degree bricks. Uh -huh. So, and after harvest the fruit, and then we blow the fruit with air pumped like this. Uh -huh. So, and after that, the fruit has been cleaned by wiping with a 300 ppm of electrolyte waters yet before we, we already investigate uh, by using this uh, technique, it can reduce some the infections of the microbe and some uh, fungi infections that might be and infects to from to the fruit from the farms. Uh -huh. So and after that, uh, we recut the the stem and cow like this. Uh -huh. So and after that, uh, coating the fruit with the citrusol AK. So this is the the coating uh, containing eighty percent canuba wax and resins. Uh -huh. So and after that, we dry the fruit at the room temperature like this. Pack in the corrugated box and store at uh, 10 degrees Celsius. So for storage, and uh, we also simulate simulation for the transportation by uh, sea transportation or marine transportation. So unfortunately, because the pandemic of COVID-19, so uh, we could not uh, send our fruits by sea transportation. So we can do just only for the simulation, but for air transportation, we can send our food by flight. So by using this technique, it can prolong the stock, extend the storage life the maintain the quality of the fruit with our internal browning for up to three weeks. 21 days. So uh, by this period, it is enough to export uh, the fruit to Korea because in the normal condition, in the normal situation, the transportation by, by ship from Bangkok to Seoul to Korea, it takes about 10 to 12 days. So, and by using this technique, we can extend the storage life of the fruit to three weeks. So it is enough for the transportation by uh, sea transportation. So, and anyway, we, after we develop the, the, the techniques, the procedure post-harvest handling to our pineapples, and then uh, I sent the fruit export, the fruit in order to check the quality and safety testing with the laboratory of Ministry of Fruit and Drug Safety uh, in Korea. Uh -huh. So we sent the fruit to Korea by flight. Uh -huh. So after check the quality and safety, mainly the, the pesticide residues uh -huh, and uh, the, some uh, disease uh, infections uh, to the fruit. Uh -huh. So and after that, we got the certified of imported food to Korea in order to for the first shipment of the fruit to Korea. First, you must send uh, to check the quality and safety of the fruit first. And after got the, uh, the certificates. So and then uh, the company it can continue sending or exporting the fruit to Korea. So uh, our, our fruit has been already certified by uh, Ministry of Food and Drug Safety in Korea already. So because uh, 
the COVID-19, we could not follow the flu to Korea. So I asked the importers at Korea to check the quality of the fruit. So this is the some uh, the quality checking by the importers. So uh, the fruit has been acceptable uh, during store at 20 degrees Celsius up to two weeks. So still acceptable. So, but anyways, uh, for this year project, uh, I already finished, but anyway, we need to continue this project. Uh, again, uh, we, we would like to check the preference of Korea consumer with uh, our pineapple as well. Uh -huh. So it's it going to be a next project uh, for us. Uh -huh. So not only a whole fruit, uh, we still uh, study on the flat cut pineapples because uh, uh, for flat cut pineapples, uh, mainly we export to, to China. And right now we also export to Korea. We also export to Malaysia and some uh, several countries. Uh -huh. So for this one, it is the, the conventional method for preparing and handling step for flat cut pula pineapples. Uh -huh. So after harvest, the fruit, uh, the, the peels has been removed like this. And after that, uh, the people uh, in the factory, they remove the fruitlets, the, the small bags, uh, fruit uh, like this. Uh -huh. And then uh, has been washed and then packed in the plastic bags, put, in, put on ice uh, like this. And then they pack in the, the box, the foam box like this for exportation. So in Chiang Rai, we export the flat cut pula pineapples to uh, the southern part of Thailand to Kunming city by the refrigerated trucks. And this uh, picture show the flat cut pula pineapple in Chinese market at Kunming, China. But anyway, uh, because of the short uh, the short shelf life and the, the changes of the post harvest quality of the fresh cuts. So why uh, our laboratory need to develop the post harvest technology that can be used for fresh cut pineapples. Mm -hmm. So I have tried using the UVC uh, irradiations on the quality of flat cut pineapple because the main uh, post harvest losses of flat cut pineapples cause from the decay uh, from the microbes uh, from the microbial. So uh, in this study, uh, so uh, after we peel off the fruit and then uh, cut into the, the four pieces like this, uh, dip in the, the cold 2% sodium chloride for one minute. So before we have tried uh, several solutions uh, and then we found that uh, using the simple solution 2% uh, sodium chloride, it works to maintain the quality of the fruit and also can improve the taste of the fresh cut uh, pineapple as well. And then dry in the ambient air like this. So this step also very important. So need to remove uh, some waters that might be uh, contaminated uh, during the, the storage of the fresh cut pineapple as well. So, and after that, so this is the, the easy UVC chamber that we developed in, in the lab uh, using the UVC irradiation like this. And then um, we have tried in the uh, several intensities. So in the lab, we, we found that exposures of fresh cut pula pineapple for uh, 20, uh, 120 seconds or about 2.64 kilojoule per square meter. It's work, it's good uh, condition to uh, extend and prolong stock shelf life for the fresh cut uh, pula pineapples. So, and after that, uh, after irradiate and then put in the plastic tear and uh, pack in the PP bags again and store at five degrees Celsius like this. So this picture shows the, the appearance of the flat cut pula pineapples. 
after store for 14 weeks at 5 degrees Celsius, the, the appellant still look good. So, and after that, um, uh, we checked for the microbial populations and then uh, we found that uh, using 120 seconds, uh, so by this treatment, it can reduce uh, the, the populations of microbial if compared with the, the control ones. So for the overall acceptability, uh, it, it doesn't uh, difference among the treatments so this show the total phenolic contents and vitamin C. So it's some it shows some a possibility that uh, using UVC irradiation can maintain the higher contents of uh, the vitamin C contents and uh, maintain higher antioxidant activity by FIAP and DPPH uh, assay if compared with the control ones. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this study, so we found that uh, UVC treatment has a high potential to maintain the quality and antioxidant capacity in flat cut to lab pineapple. So right now it is still uh, ongoing research that uh, I try to develop and upscale for this uh, of this technique for the commercial scales uh, and by using this uh, UVC treatment in combination with with the packaging uh, so it, it's still ongoing research by this so uh, let me move to another uh, study on mango fruit as you may know Thailand uh, we produce a lot of mangoes and we are in the lang, uh, in the top 10 country who uh, produced a mango and also export mango especially uh, in uh, using nam dog mai si thong varieties this is the the main variety to uh, for exportations to the foreign countries so and uh, because of the problem of uh, mangoes, it is uh, the decay caused by anthracnose and also the short shell flies after harvest, uh, the fruit uh, turn to ripening very fast, something like that. This, this is the main problem for, for mango. So in this study, I try to use the applications of salicylic plant growth regulators a natural and safe phenolic compounds. So, and this that uh, by using salicylic acid, it is uh, has been uh, found that it can reduce the quantities and quality loss of the horticultural uh, crops. Mm -hmm. So this shows some uh, the information of salicylic acid on post harvest physiologies of horticultural crops. Uh, salicylic acid can control the post harvest decay by decreasing the expressions of ascorbate peroxidase and catalase genes, leading to increase in hydrogen peroxide, which is an important signal uh, to activate the different genes, so that's why uh, this treatment can use to reduce uh, some decay or defense uh, the disease uh, resistant, improve the resist, resistance to, to the fruit. And another functions of salicylic acid is delay of the fruit ripening. So by using uh, of salicylic acid, it can delay uh, reducing uh, ethylene productions, it can reduce the weight loss by reducing of the respiration and reduce the firmness of the fruit. That's why it can reduce or delay the fruit ripening. So uh, in this study, I have tried using uh, post-harvest salicylic application in control the post-harvest decay of the mango fruit. Uh -huh. So uh, in the the common post harvest treatment, hot water treatment, has been applied use in order to uh, control the decay of the fruit. Even uh, for export mango, uh, the company 
uh, still also using this technique. However, uh, sometimes uh, using hot water treatment, it can induce the water loss or uh, reduce the firmness of the fruit as well. So in this study, I try using the combination between hot water treatment at 55 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, and then combine with the salicylic acid at the concentration with one millimolar and two millimolar uh, concentration of, of this uh, salicylic acid. And for the control fruit, we observe the decay uh, from 10 days after harvest. Uh -huh. But by the treatment, uh, it can reduce the decay of the fruit uh -huh, until up to 20 days after storage, especially the treatment of 2 millimolar salicylic acid uh, can delay the, the ripening of the fruit better than 1 millimolar and only hot water treatment. So for the next study, because uh, using uh, salicylic acid application has been used uh, in the pre-harvest and post-harvest treatment. So last year, I have tried uh, the, the application of pre- and post-harvest treatment of salicylic acid in the mango fruit. So we uh, spray salicylic acid to the fruit at uh, about three weeks before harvest. Uh -huh. So after spray and then harvest the fruit, three weeks later, we harvest the fruit. And after that, we uh, move the fruit to our laboratory uh -huh, to, to check the, the uh, maturity of the fruit by floating and sinking in 2% uh, solution of sodium chloride. Uh -huh. so, and then get uh, the, the same maturity the same maturity of the fruit. And after that, uh, uh, we did uh, hot water treatment by dip in the, in the hot water at 55 degrees Celsius at 10 minutes. So this one based on the conditions uh, for the uh, export company. And after that, after dip in the hot water and then immediately dip in uh, the solution, cold solution of to minimolar salicylic acid uh, in order to reduce uh, the heat damage from the fruit as well. And after that, so we uh, dry at the room temperature like this and then store at 13 degrees Celsius uh, to check the quality changes of the fruit. Uh -huh. So this is the, the treatment that we have done in Nam Dok Mai Si Thong mango fruit uh -huh, for the pre harvest spray and post harvest immersions and also the combination between pre and post harvest salicylic acid. So, this, and this picture show the changes of uh, the mango fruit during the storage. So we found that uh, salicylic acid can reduce the decay to the disease in the mango fruit. So we uh, start observe the disease at 10 days uh, during storage, uh -huh. but for the treatment with uh, the combination of hot water treatment and salicylic acid pre post and the combination it pre and post, we uh, can store fruit up to 20 days uh -huh, without any uh, the decay. Some, some small decay has been <laughs> observed. At, yes. yes. Uh, I spent a lot of I'm time. Sorry. You still uh, have around 40 minutes, Naka. How many minutes I have? Four, four minutes, four minutes. Okay, so yes. Yeah. So for the, the delay, uh, we've, uh, from the, this study, salicylic acid uh, can delay foot ripening as shown in, in this slide. It can delay the weight loss, significantly delay the weight loss of the fruit and can delay the decay, significantly decay, delay the decay of the fruit. And also, especially the firmness, as I already mentioned, hot water treatment sometimes can uh, induce the, the uh, can change the, the firmness of the, of the fruit. So by using salicylic acid, it can maintain the firmness of the fruit as shown in the figures. Uh -huh. So, and then uh, for the changes of uh, soluble solid contents and acidity as well, uh, SA can delay the changes of uh, 
soluble solid contents and acidity still remain higher than uh, the control one. So it means that the fruit has been, uh, the, the ripening of the fruit has been delayed. And then uh, salicylic acid uh, in this study, uh, I found that it can enhance bioactive compound and antioxidant activities by, uh, it can maintain highest amount of phenolic compounds and also uh, higher activities of uh, antioxidant by DPPH and FRAP assays. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing, so this is uh, quite new information that uh, SA can enhance anti-inflammatory activities. So um, for the nitric radicals scavenging activities and hyaluronidase inhibiting activities uh, has been used to make sure for the anti-inflammatory activities in the fruit right now. So, and then uh, in this study, we, we found that using the salicylic acid, especially the combination between pre and post, how it salicylic acid can uh, maintain higher amount of anti-inflammatory activities. So for the conclusions of this study, so salicylic acid, it is an effective way to delay the ripening process and can maintain the quality of the fruit. It also can enhance uh, antioxidant compound, antioxidant uh, activities and anti-inflammatory property in the fruit. So that's why uh, these treatments, I mean, uh, the combination between pre and post highway treatment can uh, recommend uh, to use for ma on mango fruit in order to maintain the post harvest quality, biochemical contents, and also extend storage life. That why can provide the fruit to the consumer with the better health benefits. Uh -huh. So that all for my uh, presentations about post harvest technologies on. Uh, horticultural products in Thailand. So let me introduce a bit about my school, School of Agro Industry. We have uh, the pro two programs, the program in food, science and technologies, and another program we have uh, post harvest technology and logistics. So we also have the uh, graduate program, master and the doctor of philosophy program in food, science and technologies. We have a double degree with uh, several uh, University in Japan as well. Mm -hmm. So not only uh, post harvest things, we still have a people, uh, a lecturer in the field of food technology, food engineering, product and development, quality and safety. Uh, and also we have a people in the field of packaging, logistic and smart farming, something like that. So this is the, our website. So if you would like to, uh, to know more about the school, so you can visit our website like this. And also right now, uh, the, the scholarship also available for a graduate student, for a student who would like to continue master and PhD in our school as well. And we also really welcome international students with us. We have some uh, several Indonesia students in our uh, school as well. Uh -huh. So thank you very much for your kind attention. So this is the top view of our university. We are the most beautiful university in Thailand. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Dr. Sutiwaseta. Thank you for giving us the such informative and interesting presentation. Well, we can get a lot of insight from the post-harvest practices especially about anoxic treatment, UVC treatment, and SA treatment, and also the supply chains of horticultural product for pulai pineapple and Thai mango. Okay, thank you. Thank you very we much. Move, we move to our second speaker, Ms. Drupadi Chiptaning Tias PhD. Uh, are you with us now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. I will read a, her brief curriculum vitae, please, operator. Okay. 
Ms. Drupadi Ciptaning Tias PhD. She is a lecturer in field of study agricultural engineering, faculty of agro-industrial technology, Pajajaran University Indonesia. In 2011, she graduated from agricultural engineering, uh, IPB University uh, for her bachelor degree. Moreover, Okay, she graduated as a Master of Joint Degree Programs, IPB University and Ehime University, Japan in 2014. She finished her doctoral degree in Chiba University in field of study environmental science for bioproduction with doctoral thesis entitled Optimization of Ripening Process for Mature green tomato based on physical and biological characteristics. Recently, she returned back to Indonesia after conducting her postdoctoral post -doctoral research in Chiba University. Welcome back home, Mr. Padi. And her research interests are non destructive quality for post harvest product, ripening process of post harvest agricultural product, the application of mathematical modeling of ripening prediction method, the effect of pre-harvest treatment on post harvest quality and many more. Here are the several publication from Ms. Dupradi that has been published in high reputable journal. The latest paper are modeling the ripening pattern of three cultivar mango green tomato based on fair cup color CD value at different storage temperature. This paper already accepted in Nature Scientific Report 2022. And then the typical ripening pattern curve model for tomato harvested at better green stage base on the pericup color using the CA value published in Akta Horticulturae 2021. Next, she also created by many awards such as high quality scientific article and she's also scholarship awardee from Mombu Kagakuso, Jaso, Dikti, etc. I know I quite uh, I know I hold you quite long, Ms. Drupadi. You have 40 minutes. Time is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Ibu Asri, for the introduction. Uh, good up uh, good morning, everybody. Saudika Tiksense. I don't know if you still remember me, but we actually have met several times in Chiba University. I am a good friend of uh Joy Sang, if 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 you remind me, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Actually, she's the one who recommended me to in, in, invite you to this general lecture. So thank you very much for accepting the invitation, Dick Sensei. Okay, let me share my uh, PowerPoint. Okay. Um, as the moderator has mentioned that for today's uh, lecture, I would like to deliver the topic entitled Application of Mathematical Modeling to Optimize Storage Temperature and Period During the Mature Green Tomato Ripening Process. So instead of lecture, maybe it's more like sharing for me because uh, I'm not sure if I'm capable enough to give a lecture to everyone. Uh, since I'm a newbie, and um, uh, this is uh, the to this topic actually, I take it from my uh, dissertation. So this is about two research stories, two research of the six research I conducted for my PhD thesis, and uh, I decided to choose the mathematical modeling as the topic because I met several students. Uh, are terrified when we mention about mathematical modeling like that. So I think it's a misconduct. Uh, there is a misconduct, a misinformation, mis information 
because maybe students think that mathematical modeling meaning programming but in this uh uh opportunity i want to show that it is not it, it it's incorrect uh programming is only one of the many tools you can use to uh simulate dating or model uh so yeah my name is Drupadi Chitanin Dias, and I am a faculty member of the Faculty of Agroindustrial Technology, Universitas Pajajar. Uh, the outline of today's uh, topic, I will, I, 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 uh, I make uh, two part of this presentation. The first one is the introduction. Or I will introduce you and a little bit about the physiological of the ripening process. And then we will continue to uh, try to understand how to develop a model to describe the ripening uh, process of the tomato. And then the third part here, we will uh, develop the model to predict the ripening process of uh, the matter green tomato. And then we will have a general discussion and the conclusions. So, sorry. United States Department of Agriculture established six ripening stages for tomato based on the skin color. They are green, brecker, turning pink, light red, and red. And a uh, mature green stage of development is the most recommended harvesting stage for tomato, not only because it can extend the self life, but also it can reduce the losses due to spoilage, especially because of the mechanical impact. And uh, in the subtropical and temperate regions such as Japan, uh, tomato usually cultivate in the closed cultivation system where the consumption of the energy will be higher compared to the open cultivation system. So by shortening the uh, on-farm agricultural production by harvesting the tomato in the mature green stage of development, it can be an energy saving measure. And by the end of the day, it will impact the efficiency, uh, the economical efficiency of the uh, agricultural production of tomato. Until today, as far as I know, there is no report show that the off-fine full ripe tomato has significantly uh, lower uh, quality compared to the on fine uh, full ripe tomato. That's why evaluating the ripening process and quality change of the off fine mature green tomato as a glimmer of hope to the tomato supply change is considered important. In 1998, Wills et al. Uh, reported that the uh, ethylene always found in the ripening process of the fleshy fruit. That's why they introduced this uh, uh, graph showing the relationship between the growth, respiration rate, and acetylene for both climactric and non-climactric fruit. But since tomato is an, a climactric fruit, let's us just follow the climactric trend. So during the growth, the increasing of the growth, the respiration rate will be decreased, but no significant change in ethylene production. Yes, it is decreasing, but it's very slight different. And then when the growth reach its uh, equilibrium point, there will be a uh, sharply increase, a sharp increment in the respiration rate and ethylene production. And it will continue until the beginning of the senescence. Wills also reported that actually ethylene is not all about uh, controlling the ripening process, but it has also the ability to initiate the biochemical and physiological event, and it is regulated in the gene expression and hormone level. And uh, that's why understanding the change in the physiological, biochemical, and genetical level of the ripening process of tomato is essential to decide uh, the proper post-harvest technology application. And then uh, about the mathematical modeling, it's actually a description of a system using mathematical concept and language. In short, we will make a conceptual world by having three stages. The first one we have to observe, we have to take the data, we have to observe the phenomenon. And then by using the data, we can model, uh, we can develop the model. And then we may or we may not 
make a prediction. Why may and may not? Because uh, the objective of the model is not all about the prediction. Sometimes it's only to describe the behavior or to explain why the behavior happened and then to predict. So the application of mathematical modeling in post-harvest technology is widely used, especially for the ripening uh, process of tomato because it has a beneficial uh, effect to understand the whole system of the ripening process of tomato in a more simple way. Because ripening process in tomato is very complicated. Um, my thesis um, for PhD is focusing, focusing on the ripening process of the tomato. Uh, we did a lot of things. I mean, not only modeling, but also the gene expression analysis, the bio, uh, sorry, chemical, biochemical, and uh, physical analysis, and it's very complicated. So uh, by using the model, uh, we may uh, know the whole process by more simple way. So as uh, the title of this uh, presentation, we want to find the optimum storage condition based on the temperature and the duration or the period of, uh, of the mature green tomato ripening process. So, uh, we only will check the first um, objective, which is by using the mathematical modeling. So please ignore the rest of the number. Then uh, section two, we will uh, try to develop a model to describe the tomato uh, ripening process based on the cumulative ethylene production. So uh, ripening process in tomato is always associated with the red color and the onset of the rise in ethylene production. And in this study, we use uh, Momotari York cultivar. Why? Because it is the most common uh, tomato cultivar in Japan. And it, um, it has a standard size and then brown shape and deep uh, red color, sorry, deep pink color in a pink. And most of the study about Momotari York is always about the pre-harvest stage, about the maturity, oh, sorry, the ripening uh, process in the pre-harvest sting stage. So uh, observing the ripening behavior of Momotari York after harvest or post-harvest is uh, considered essential. And everyone knows that the uh, storage, sorry, the Tem storage temperature is very important for the uh, ripening process of matur or maturing, maturing process. And in 2010, Nakamura et al. Uh, successfully developed the uh, prediction model to predict the color by using the cumulative ethylene production. Unfortunately, they only attempt for 25 degrees in storage temperature. That's why we have to try to observe if the model that they, that they uh, develop is working for another storage temperature. So in this study, uh, we uh, divided into two parts. The first part we called R1 and the second part we called R2. In the R1, we use or we stored the tomato in three different storage temperature, namely 5, 15, and 25 degrees C. And we stored five uh, tomatoes in each storage temperature. And we always measured the same tomato every time we perform the measurements. So in total, we only need 15 tomato. But for R2, we stored the tomato at six different storage temperature. Uh, namely 5, 10, 12, 15, 20, and 35 degrees C. And then we always uh, hey. <laughs> we always use the different, different sample, different tree sample every time we uh, measure the tomato. So in total, we need 243 tomato fruits. And the objective of this two uh, parts of the uh, experiment is, of course, the first, the first one uh, for R1. Hello, Fariba, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, the first part, we want to compare the current result with the previous research obtained by Nakamura at all 2010. That's why we use 25 degrees seal also. 
Well, the second part, we want to observe the goodness of the proposed model when different samples were used. Why we have to know uh, if the if the model is worked for different sample? Because sometimes we want to know if uh, we, we want to conduct the such as uh, chemical analysis. So we need to take some part of the tomato and then do the analysis uh, because of that destructive, uh, how can I say, the destructive uh, method. So we cannot uh, use the same tomato for the next uh, measurement for the color and ethylene, right? So that's why we, we have to know if the uh, model is work for uh, different samples. So the parameters are very simple, the relative weight, weight, and then color and physical appearance. And then this one is a little bit complicated for ethylene production rate. So we measure it by using flame ionization detector, gas chromatograph, and respiration rate. Uh, we measured it based on the production of uh, CO2 by using thermal conductivity detector. It's a bit pricey. Uh, this research is a bit pricey, but it's worth it. So here is my um, uh, favorite part about the modeling approach. So uh, as I mentioned before, that Nakamura at 2010 show uh, 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 reported there is a relationship following the sigmoid type function model between cumulative ethylene production and CIEF value. Like this, it's almost similar, right? So what is CIEF value? CIEF value is actually a parameter for color uh, that range from negative to positive value. Negative value showed the green color, while positive value showed the red color. So it's ranked from green to red color. Because uh, they found that there is this relationship, so they developed this uh, estimated uh, CIE value formula uh, based on the cumulative atlant production. So the free variable x here is the atlant production, sorry, cumulative atlant production, while the alpha, beta, and gamma is the parameter that obtained by the optimization by using least square method. Here is the part where the student mostly terrified. Uh, so I have uh, after I have the data, should I make a program or something? It's not. It's very simple way. Uh, there is a very simple way. For me, I just use a uh, solver function provided by the Microsoft Excel to solve the nonlinear curve fitting problems. It's very uh, simple. And then I calculate the coefficient of determination and root mean square error for the goodness of fit. And then how about the result? In R1, let's focus on R1. We can see that at five degrees C, there is no sharp increase in uh, CO2 production or respiration rate, meaning maybe there is something happen. Like uh, it's not like uh, the, sh the graph I showed before, that there should be a sharp increase like in 15 and 25 degrees C for uh, the respiration rate when it's undergrown the uh, normal ripening process, right? But for R2, it's actually a little bit hard to find the sharp increase because we always use different sample. But based on the average uh, of the CO2 production rate, uh, we know that uh, the lower the storage temperature, the lower the CO2 production rate and vice versa. It's, I think, the common uh, knowledge. So everyone knows that if we store uh, the product, the agricultural product, in a lower tem storage temperature, it will, uh, uh, how can I say, it may make the shelf life longer than if we stored it at the higher storage temperature. And then how about the ethylene production? For R1 and R2, uh, at five degrees C, there is no atlant, uh, no onset of the rise in atlant production, meaning the uh, the tomato is indeed uh, under undergone the abnormal ripening process at five degrees C because no onset of atlant production. But for the rest of the tested storage temperature, the onset of the rise in atlant production was found. And then let let's take a look at this. Uh, a squared uh, point here. Uh, for R1, we use the same tomato every time we measure, we, we perform the measurement. And then we always, uh, sorry, we also harvest it at the same time, at the same, at the same season, and it was cultivated at the same 
uh, greenhouse. And we gave the same treatment for every tomato stored at the same storage temperature. But what happened here is the onset of the rice and atlan production occur differently among the samples. It's indicating that the individual variation does exist. That's why uh, agricultural product, especially for this one maybe horticultural product is a very unique product because they have the individual variation that's why it's um, very i don't want to say hard maybe it's very challenging to make a model for the agricultural product and then how about the change in color you can see here for five and uh, for five degree both r1 and r2 the cie value never crossing the zero point or maybe there's one one sample here but actually no, almost all of the sample, no, uh, how can I say, no tomato showed the CIE value more than zero. And uh, for the appearance, no red color has been developed. But for uh, the other temperatures from 10 to 25 degrees C, the red color is was developed. But this interesting part is for 35 degrees C. The CIE value is more than zero. However, there is no red color has been developed. Instead, there is the yellow color, yellow to our orange and slightly brown color, I would say, uh, has appeared for the tomato stored at 30 degrees C. So uh, we also uh, realized that the, the, the CIE value turns from negative to positive at the same time as the onset of the rice in Atlanta production. So there is a very close relationship between the Atlant release from the fruit and the red color development. And maybe the Atlant production and the key uh, and the color development are controlled by the same key factor governing the ripening process of tomato. Until here, we still don't know what is that. Maybe you have to dig more into, uh, into the uh, genetical level. And then this is the result of the, of the of the model after we model it and then we showed it in the uh, graph. Uh, you can see here the dot is the experimental data while the dash is the estimated data. So no regression analysis I can I can I can make for five degrees C because simply because no rise in Atlant production and then no red color has been developed. So no regression analysis for five degrees C. But uh, uh, the rest uh, of it, the storage temperature, we can make the, the model. And then it's also uh, showed that actually the proposed model is not only uh, applicable for 25 degrees C, it can be used for other storage temperature ranked from 20 to 35 degrees C. For R1, even though there is the different in the onset of the rise in Atlant production and then the uh, change when the CIE value turning positive, but a single sigmoid type function model can cover all of that difference. So it's still okay. And interestingly, uh, for R2 also, even though we use different sample, but uh, the model still can be used, even though, uh, uh, sorry. So there is a, it, it's indicating that there is a very high relationship between the amount of Atlant release from the fruit and the red color development that directly shown by the sigmoid function. Uh, but of course, if we compare the goodness of fit between R1 and R2, of course, R1 has a higher goodness of fit, the better goodness of fit compared to the R2. But uh, the goodness of fit of R2, I think it's still acceptable since we have the, uh, we, we have the opportunity to, to do more analysis that uh, require the destructive method, right? If we, if we uh, use the R2, uh, research design. And then from here also, I show you the alpha, beta, gamma, the optimized alpha, beta, gamma uh, based on the nonlinear least square method. And then we tried to find the relationship between alpha, beta, gamma and the storage temperature. And apparently there is the relationship. And then so uh, in this uh, graph, I show you the relationship between storage temperature and parameter alpha, beta and gamma. So we pretend that we don't have the 15 degree C alpha beta gamma. Let's pretend that we don't have the 15 degree C alpha beta gamma. And then by using this cubical uh, formula, we calculate the alpha beta gamma for each, uh, sorry, for 
15 degrees C. And then this is the result. And then if we compute it into the proposed model, we will get this graph. This is a graph uh, showing the sigmoid type function model uh, between the cumulative ethylene production and CIEA value based on the linear regression analysis approach. It's very simple. So why, why this is important? Because uh, measuring the ethylene production is not only complicated, but also pricey. We need the very complicated and expensive apparatus. So if we know this relationship, so we can make, or we can estimate, we can make the same graph, graph like this, as long as it's ranked from 10 to 35 degrees C, right? Because we have the alpha, beta, gamma from here. So it's, it's, it's very uh, convenient way. But of course, if we compare it to the uh, sigmoid approach, of course, the goodness of it is better for sigmoid approach. But the goodness of it of the linear regression analysis is prom promising, I think. Now, let's move on to the section three well, where we will try to develop the prediction before it's just the uh, descri descri des description, right? And then now let's 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 try to make the the, uh, the prediction model. So we know that the relationship between cumulative ethylene production and CIEF value is following the sigmoid type function model. But actually, during the experiment, we realize there is another thing that following the sigmoid type function model, not only between cumulative atlant production and CIEF value, but also between CIEF value and storage period. You can see here that it's almost similar. It's similar. I can say that. So that's why we aim to develop the novel model describing red color development of tomato harvested at the mature green stage of development during ripening based on storage period. So this is a novel model. We made it. We 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 developed it by yourself by ourselves. So in this uh, in this uh, experiment, we use three different cultivars, namely Miracle, Regetsu, and Momotaro York. Twenty-five each. So in total, it's seventy-five uh, tomato fruit, and then we stored it at five different storage temperature. Sorry, what happened? Okay, and uh, we perform the prediction, uh, sorry, we perform only two parameters, fair cup color and physical appearance. It's a very simple uh, method. And then here we have, uh, from the earlier study uh, that we can uh, describe the CIEF value or the red color development based on cumulative ethylene production by using this formula. And then now we found that the relationship between CIEF value and storage period also following the sigmoid type function, then simply, uh, it's very simple. We can use the same formula by changing the free variable from the cumulative atlant production to the day of storage. It's very simple, right? <laughs> However, this is the, the challenge, the challenging part. So this formula can only uh, predict the change or the development of red color in P2. So what is P2? P2 is the uh, part where CIE value is more than zero, meaning the red color has been developed. So before that, this uh, formula doesn't work. That's why we need another approach. So it's called time lag. So what is time lag? Time lag is the time required by the tomato when it, since it was harvested until it started to develop the red color. So it's usually called uh, the breaker stage of development. Uh, theoretically, it should be the, the say a value should be uh, precisely zero. But in uh, practical, when we analyze, we never found the CIE a value equals zero because we only we, we always measured the change in color every 24 hours. So maybe the zero is uh, happen at 21 hours or 22 hours, we never know. So uh, anyway, the time when the CIE value is equal to zero, we call it time lag. Because we never saw, we never find the CIE value equal to zero. So we use the same uh, proposed model and change a little bit, just a simple uh, transformation 
so that we can find, we can calculate the day of storage when the CIE A value equal to zero. It's a very simple method. And then the same, we use solver function, the provided one, and then we calculate the coefficient of determination and root mean square error. And the result for, change, for the uh, color change in pericope color and physical appearance show that all of the tested uh, cultivar at the all of tested temperature uh, showed uh, that the R uh, undergone the normal ripening process because uh, the red color has been developed. And then from there, we try to compare the data based on the estimation model and the experimental model. And surprisingly, the goodness of it shows that the data fit almost perfectly. It's a very good news for, for me personally, for us also. And then after that, if we calculate the average value of alpha, beta, gamma for each storage temperature and cultivar, and then compute it into, sorry, I cannot, compute it into our proposed model, then we will find this one, universally described sigmoid type function model. This uh, graph showed the typically ripening pattern model for three different cultivars at different storage temperature. However, can, you can see here that it's not finished. It seems not finished because it's never started from zero, right? So that's why we need to uh, do the time lag analysis. And then apparently time lag has the relationship with the storage temperature also. So by using this cubic uh, formula, we can estimate the time lag of the three different tomato cultivars stored between 10 to 30 degrees C. It's, it's very convenient. And then we also uh, surprisingly found some fact, uh, a fact that very interesting, that 30 degrees C is uh, not recommended uh, storage temperature story for storing the tomato because it has, uh, the tomato that's stored at 30 degrees C has a slower ripening rate compared to that stored at 25 degrees C. So finally, after combining the universal describing uh, function and then the time lag, we get this typical ripening pattern curve. This uh, pattern curve is a uh, very important curve because it can predict the ripening process of tomato harvested at the mature green stage of development at different storage temperature, but only for three different cultivars. And then now let's move on to finally general discussion and conclusions. So uh, as we mentioned, as I mentioned in the first part of first section of the of this lecture, that we want to find the optimum storage condition for ripening process of mature green tomato, but only based on the model. And then we only want to consider the storage temperature and storage period uh, uh, to, to be optimized. So what should we do? First of all, we have to standardize the ripening stage of tomato. So the easiest way is just use the USDA ripening standard. Unfortunately, they only provide the picture and the number of each ripening stages. While the quantification left unknown. So we try to rank the we try to arrange the rank of the CIE value for every opening uh, stage based on the USD. And this is the, the rank of CIE value. And then uh, finally, we can uh, based on the finding in the section three, we can know that if we want to get, for example, we want to get the pink. Pink stage, of, uh, pink stage of development of tomato at for 32 days, then you have to start it at 12 degrees C and so on. And we also know that 5 and 35 degrees C is not a recommended uh, story temperature because the immersion of abnormal ripening process always appear at that temperature. While 30 degrees C is an also not recommended harvest uh, storage temperature because it's inefficient, except you want to store your a tomato in a longer time uh, compared to that at 25 degrees C, but with, of course, risk, because it's a high temperature, so maybe it will be more comfortable 
for any microbes or fungi to live in your tomato. And then finally, we, we, we can develop this optimum storage temperature and period for tomato at different ripening stages for three different tomato cultivars. So for example, if today you uh, harvest the mature green tomato and then your customer want to get the light red tomato with uh, after like, like let's say uh, two weeks, then you have to store it at least higher, oh sorry, lower here, right? 20, 20 days. So Eh, sorry, 15 days, uh, two weeks, so meaning 14 days. So if you start in at uh, 20 degrees C, you will get the right bread after 16 days. So maybe you have to, you have to store it uh, between 20 and 15 degrees C, something like that. So as I, I mentioned that uh, we also did several other analysis for the ripening process. I, I, I want to show you some recommendation, especially for Momotaro York, because Momotaro York is the cultivar that we use as the sample for our analysis. First one, the, it's quite interesting that um, in the gene expression level, the gene related to the ethylene and carotenoid biosynthesis pathway show a higher uh, level at 15 degrees C compared to that at 20 degrees C. And actually, from the uh, second uh, session of this uh, presentation, it showed that uh, at 15 degrees C, the cumulative ethylene production is three times higher compared to that at 20 degrees C. And at 15 degrees C also, the lycopene and beta-carotene uh, produce higher compared to that uh, tomato stored at 20 degrees C. So if you want to get the high intensity a red color of tomato with high beta carotene and like lycopene for Momotaro, Momotaro York, please, um, how can I say, please store it at 15 degrees C. It's the most recommended uh, storage temperature. So uh, this work I have been presented, um, uh, all of it already published in four different papers. So if you're interested in, uh, how can I say, in learning more about it, please read our paper. Uh, it seems that it's very simple, it's very easy. The method is not that hard, but we successfully uh, published it in the Q first, uh, Q1 first uh, Q paper. So I think it's worth it. I think that's all for me. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Drupadi, for your interesting presentation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now come to the Q&A session. Please use the raise hand features in the Zoom, then unmute your microphone and camera. Okay, I'd like to have three questions from the audience, maybe. Is there any participant? Still not, okay. Okay, then I will uh, go to the chat box, okay. Oh, we already, maybe for second speaker, we have already one question. Okay. First question is coming from Mr. Lukito for Mr. Ms. Dupadi. He asked about, does the mathematical model of tomato ripening process may apply to plants of the same family as tomatoes, for example, Solanum tuberosum or maybe Solanum nigrum? Uh, okay. 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 Thank you very much uh, for the question. Um, I guess um, the approach we can we can use the same approach, but of course that mathematical modeling. Uh, I mean, for if if it's for the first uh, sorry se second session, yes, it can be applied as long as it has it produced the ethylene production and has developed the red color. So yes, the model can be used. But for the uh, third session, I I already mentioned there is a several uh, cultivar. So I think it, it cannot be used. You you because it's uh. Yeah, the, the, the horticultural product is a very unique product. So we have to consider the different cultivar or 
yeah, like that. Even though it's the same family, I think uh, you cannot you cannot use the same uh, graph. But for the approach, the modeling, yes, you can use it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Drupadi. Is there any from the audience who wants to ask directly to the speakers? If not, maybe I will start. Uh, I have question for Dr. Sutiwal. Yeah. Uh, as we see today, Kun Sutiwal, many customers are searching for quality, uh, best quality product at the lower cost. And whenever we add some uh, additional post hazardous treatment, such as maybe uh, anoxic treatment or SA treatment, it made uh, usually it made the pro the price of the product uh, slightly higher. And may I get your perspective how to deal with this uh, situation? Uh, for example, if we want to apply, maybe uh, from your presentation, there is a treatment about coating, coating, uh, maybe edible coat for minimally processed fruits in pule pineapple. Uh, from your experience, how to choose the best practice for specific horticultural products? Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you very much for, for your question. So that's why uh, normally my research, I work with farmer, I work with the local company. So this is the first thing that I have uh, considers about the technologies that I, after study, I would like to transfer my knowledge, transfer the technologies to, to the farmer or the local company as well. So that's why I try to uh, choose the technologies that uh, it's quite low price. So even um, using the anoxic treatment. So uh, we use the nitrogen gas. So if compared with the other techniques, for example, control atmosphere techniques, something like that. So this one must be cheaper than uh, uh, the, the, ex the expensive uh, technologies like a control atmosphere. But anyway, uh, for the practicals, it's still uh, some difficult to apply this technique to, to the local company, something like this. But for move to the flat cup uh, pineapples, so I try to develop using the UVC irradiation treatment because this treatment is quite cheap and also practical for the, the, the local company as well. So I try to develop the uh, the models, the machines that can upscale from our lab to the company as well. So this one is uh, on process and also uh, using only UVC irradiation, it might be uh, not uh, completely uh, extend the, the shelf life as we want. So uh, that's why we need to combine the other technologies together, for example, uh, using the pack, uh, some packaging, using some uh, kind of the post, uh, post harvest practices. For example, uh, we need to uh, choose the right stage of the maturities. So we uh, need to uh, do a good practice in the in the processing uh, room as well, something like that, control the temperatures, uh, the good sanitation, something like this. Yeah, apply this one to, to this. Uh, and for the next uh, technique, uh, the last technique that I introduced using uh, salicylic acid. So this is the, the natural compound and very safe compounds uh, using if we can use this one in order to reduce the decay of mango instead of using the like a fungicide or the, some chemicals, I think it, it's gonna be uh, better uh, use by using the some kind of plant growth regulator instead of some uh, the chemical use something like this. And another thing, um, we still have uh, several technologies uh, using to our agricultural products. So if the, uh, like, uh, the farmers or the company aim to sell their product in the premium supermarket 
or send the product to Japan, something like this, or some, uh, some country that they prefer the, the premium quality of the fruit. So it is reasonable to apply the, the technologies at quite high technology with uh, uh, some pricing to, to the uh, agricultural product as well. I have one sample with uh, pineapple juice Actually, I, uh, we already developed the technology using uh, in uh, Pule pineapple juice as well. We using the high pressure technologies. Yes, uh, this is the cold pasteurization instead of the sterilization. Yes, uh, in our campus, we have a, a big machine and this one we also serve it to the local the company. So if they would like to develop uh, this, uh, the product, I mean uh, pineapple juice uh, by uh, co pasteurization so they can come to work with us. And after that, uh, they, they sell the product and they can get the double price or triple price than the, using the conventional method, something like this. So, so it depends on uh, what the level of market or what the level of consumer that they would like to sell on their product. Yes like this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, what is the biggest challenge of uh, mm -hmm. post-harvest during this post-pandemic uh, world? Yeah. Is it the post-harvest losses remain a uh, major challenge in, uh, especially in Pule, pineapple or Thai mango, maybe? Is it, what is the biggest challenge actually? Yeah, and also we are we really welcome the international students and lecturers from different countries to join the uh, project with us. Yeah, so that's why I really recommend to visit our website. Yes, we still have a lot of uh, the lecturers who work in the uh, agricultural products, food technologies, post harvest technologies. So so you you can join us. <laughs> Thank you, Kun uh, Sutiwa Seta. Okay, do we have, uh, do still have enough time? Uh, is there any participant? Maybe from the chat box? Okay. Okay, so, uh, we will wait uh, the question. Oh, yes, we have one uh, audience. Cinta, can you unmute uh, your microphone and camera? So please. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, hello everyone. I'm Cynthia Christina, uh, a student from Universitas Pajajaran, and I'm sorry I couldn't open my camera because I'm on the outside. Uh, I have a question uh, for Mrs. Drupadi. Uh, there are any interesting me from your presentation about how to evaluate the model. Uh, using RMSE and R square value. Uh, the question is why uh, we must using RMSE and R square value to evaluate the model and what is evaluated from the model by RMSE and R square value. Thank you. Can okay, Mr. Buddy, oh, okay. are you ready to answer? Okay, so why we choose the RMSE and R square? Because it's a regression analysis. So we choose to actually at first we only use the R square, but and then the uh, reviewer for our paper uh, recommend us to include it the root mean square error because uh, let me let me think I a little bit forgot they said about oh. Sorry, I cannot. I cannot recall why we should. But I, 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 I still remember that it's one of the uh, comment from the reviewer that we have to include it. The R R M root mean square error. Let me, uh, let me check on it again and then uh, talk to Cynthia directly. But and then I also want to uh, add more information that uh, another paper 
uh, we published, another reviewer also recommend us to not only show the root, root mean square error and R square, but also the percent root mean square error because we need to make it more, how can I say, understandable like that. So they recommend to use the root mean square error. So if we check on the paper that we published in Nature Scientific Report, it uh, we 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 put the percent root, root mean square error instead, uh, not only two, but also the, the percent root mean square error. I mean, uh, I'm so sorry if it's not uh, answering your question. I, I really cannot recall why I put the root mean square error. Let me, let me tell you later, sorry. Thank you very much. Okay. We still uh, have you, Mrs. question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is one question from uh, Miss Chichi from UNILA. The question is for Dr. Sutiwal Seta. This question, how to quantify the Browning score in pineapple? Mm -hmm. And then the next question is, could you explain a little bit about how to apply salicylic acid in pre-harvest condition? And so thank you very much for, for the question. So for the first question, it is very to quantify the, the Browning score. Uh, it's based on the, the, the percentage of the fresh that has been uh, occurring the Browning. For example, zero mean uh, without any Browning observed. So 10 to, uh, for example, 10 to 20%, it's equal one score, something like this. And for the, the most severe, it is about uh, more than 75% browning occurring. So it's equal five, five score, something like that. So for the second question, uh, explain about the applied salicylic acid in pre harvest condition. So this one also very easy. You just only dissolve the solutions because a salicylic acid, it is a powder, no? So dissolve in the waters. So, and then you spray roughly to the fruit. Yes, so uh, um, from our experiment, I did uh, three weeks. So it's about three to four weeks two to four weeks before harvest. So after spray to the fruit and then let it dry. Uh, and after that, you need wait until it's time to harvest the fruits. Yeah, so that's why uh, we, we, we got a very good result, especially salicylic acid can reduce the decay of the fruit and also reduce the uh, delay, the lightening of the fruit. So I think these techniques might be transferred to, to the orchard, to the farmer as well. Yes, because salicylic also very cheap, uh, the chemicals cheap and safe, yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you. Yeah. Dr. Sutiwaseta, for your explanation. We will, uh, still have a question for second speaker, still from Ms. Chichi. Uh, why photometers only use a CA value for modeling? Then the next question again from Mr. Lukito. Would you please explain very specifically what kind of the change of physical and biological during tomato ripening? Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, for the first question about, about why I choose the IEF value, maybe uh, if you read a lot, uh, if you read uh, the paper published by the Tiskin, he is the, the expert of the mathematical modeling for post-harvest uh, post harvest product is coming from the Wageningen University, uh, Netherlands. He always used uh, A star per B star uh, parameters instead of A star uh, CIE value A star parameters. So uh, we we actually we tried to use the another uh, parameter, not only A star. We tried A per B. We try another thing, but the result shows that the goodness of it is not even near to our goodness of it. Our goodness of it, you can see that it's for, if, uh, uh, especially for the second uh, model, the prediction model, it's 
fit almost perfectly. But for A per B uh, model, the goodness of fit is not even good like that. So maybe because uh, our sigmoid type function model is more, uh, how can I say, more compatible, uh, not compatible, yeah, compatible with the ACIEA value, that's why. And it's very easy also, right? We, we don't need to uh, do the further uh, calculation for that. So I think it's very convenient. And the results show it's a good, uh, good goodness of it. And then for uh, Mr. Lukito, I don't know if uh, if I can, may I share uh, uh, the PowerPoint, uh, Ms. Mrs. Astri, Mrs. Uh, moderator, for, because to, to explain this, I, I have to show a little bit, only a little bit, some slide maybe. Can I? Sorry. So maybe I can. Sorry, sorry. Where is it? Wait a minute. Okay. For the physical, wait, where is it? For the physical characteristic, of course, in, uh, one is the color, right? The color changes the physical characteristic because we don't need to touch uh, to get to know what happened, what, what changes had happened in the uh, color parameter. And then the other thing that we measured for uh, the tomato during ripening process for physical analysis is firmness. We, we, we try to analyze what happened during the uh, storage temperature of 5, 10, 12, 15, 20, and 35 degrees C. And the results show there is no uh, significant change at 5 and 10, but there is a drastic decrease at 12 degrees C. And then the constantly decrease at 15, 20, and 35 degrees C. And it's because uh, something is a physical consequence of the cell walls breakdown that was found in the tomato that was undergone the ripening process uh, according to Shackel et al. 1991. And then for the biological uh, characteristic, I don't know what should I, should I share this one? Maybe genetical is a part of biological, right? So I will show this. Wait a minute. So we chose uh, to uh, use uh, nine, oh sorry, 10 different gene. One is uh, responsible for the ethylene production while the rest, the nine, the other nine is uh, responsible for carotenoid biosynthesis pathway. So for the, this analysis, we only focus on the biosynthesis, uh, so, sorry, carotenoid biosynthesis pathway. So this is the gene that related to those uh, uh, phenomenon, ethylene and, 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 and uh, red color development. And then we use the method like, yeah, you know, the, the RNA extraction, cDNA synthesis, yeah, PCR amplification, and then un until we did the uh, RT-PCR. And the result, uh, you can see here that the key enzyme for ethylene biosynthesis pathway uh, is, uh, it showed uh, the increasing, how can I say, the upregulated uh, term uh, at, the storage temperature, uh, sorry, at uh, both 20 and 15 degrees C because we only check for those two uh, storage temperature because this analysis is very expensive, right? <laughs> and then it's also, uh, it's uh, come uh, into the same term, uh, sorry, the same trend as the uh, ethylene production rate. While for, uh, let me check. The other for lycopene production, you can see here that there is also the upregulated 
in the PSY1, ZDS, and then PDS, Cristo, and it's also the same as the lycopene uh, production. However, sorry. For this one, LC1, LCY1, and the beta, car the beta carotene, it's the other way. It's not uh, along uh, similarly, say, how can I say, linearly, uh, the trend is not linear with the beta carotene content like that. Mm, I think, okay. Yeah, this is the downstream, downstream genes. Mm, but nothing I can I can tell more I think because it's it will be too complicated because I didn't explain uh, the 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 first part of of the of the how can I say of that uh, part uh, experiment but yeah for biological maybe it's a more genetical analysis uh, that we did to get to uh, know more deeper uh, in the deeper level of uh, what happened during the ripening process of tomato like that in the gene expression level that's what we did i i hope it's it's uh answer mr lukito questions i'm sorry thank you yeah 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 excuse me yes uh yeah uh, is there any reduce in weight or in hard hardness and during storage? No, no. Weight. One. Reduce in weight and hardness. Okay. Okay. During during your experiment. Okay. okay. So uh, during storage, yes, there is the uh, decrease for the the the, the, the quite significant decre decreasing for uh, uh, hardness while for weight it's not really decreasing yeah it's it's always a small bit change because i forgot to mention because we uh we put the tomato every sample every single uh, sample of the tomato in the unsealed plastic bag it's polypropylene also so that's why maybe it prevent the evaporation from the the tomato itself is that okay Mr. Lukito. Sorry, uh, Dr. Durpadi, how long did you uh, did your, your experiment? So for, it's depend on the storage temperature. For five degrees C, we met, we, we, we stored it until 56 days of storage, while for the rest, uh, for the uh, first part, yes, first part, it's about 55, 56 days for five degrees C, while the rest is only like 40 days. While for the second part, the, 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 the prediction model, we stored it only uh, for 30 days, 30 days. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lukito. And then we have uh, one participant, Ms. Nurul Aina. So please. Sorry can, yeah. Sorry, can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Asri, for this opportunity. So um, I would like to uh give a question to uh, miss sutiwal seta and firstly maybe i would like to thank for your uh, accepting our invitation for coming today so actually uh i'm really interested to your presentation today and especially for the method in anoxic and also the salicylic acid addition to to, to, to add the self-life of uh, horticultural products. And my question is uh, for anoxic treatment and also for the salicylic acid addition, is there uh, any restriction for, uh, for, for up the application of them into uh, some specific products or we can use that uh, methods to all horticultural products? Because as we know that um, 
horticultural products or agricultural product has a very unique uh, characterization as uh, Ms. Drupadi says uh, before. And um, is there any like a specific properties that uh, we have to consider before we apply for the anoxic treatment, for example, or for salicylic acid uh, addition? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for your kind questions. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for your invitation as well. So for the first question, um, using anoxic treatment. So, but anyway, as uh, my slide show, if you use uh, for a long time, for, for example, uh, using in pineapples, we cannot using, uh, we cannot make anoxic treatment until uh, 48 hours, yeah, because it's going to be uh, make like a fermentations because at this condition without oxygen for respiration. But anyway, if you would like to apply these techniques to uh, the other kind of fruits, you need to check the optimum times for uh, short term anoxic treatment. For example, I have tried this uh, technique with uh, lychees the organic ones. So it takes uh, the, the optimum uh, time is about six hours, something like this. Yes. So maybe if you would like to, to use this technique, you need to, uh, to check uh, to see the optimum time first. Yes. But for salicylic acid, um, yeah, so some, some recommendations from people when I present uh, this kind of works, they ask me to, to check the concentrations of salicylic uh, acid in the fruit as well. But, but uh, up to now, I still haven't checked yet. But anyway, for the concentration used, it's quite low. So the maximum used in my study, I used uh, two millimolar uh, for salicylic acid. So, and I think it, it's still uh, safe enough to use in, in the fruit as well. And I also have been, uh, have experienced using salicylic treatment uh, in pineapple as well. It also can reduce uh, internal browning in pineapple in the combination between pre and post harvest techniques. But uh, if compared between using in pineapple and uh, mangoes, so I found the significant benefits of these treatments in mangoes uh, higher than in, in the pineapple fruit, especially to reduce the decay of the fruits. Yeah. So if you're interested in, in this treatment, please try uh, with mango in, in your country as well. Yes. Because you also can produce mango in your countries. Right. Yes, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think this, this one is very simple and, and easy techniques. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I am interested in that because uh, you said before that uh, you already apply these techniques to the far the, to the local farmers there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very applicable also maybe if we try to our country. So this is a very interesting. Thank you uh -huh. very much for your sharing today. Okay. Thank you very much for your question. Okay, unfortunately, uh, we cannot respond all the questions due to time limits. If you still want to ask with the speakers, feel free to contact the speaker by email. Okay. Okay. The general lectures has finally come to an end. Before uh, we close the lecture, I would like to draw a conclusion from the speaker has presented. Uh, it is highly important for us strengthening research for improving our post-harvest application and technique as to, enhance, as to enhance sustainability and quality of fast produce production. And one way uh, to improve the added value of post-harvest technology and innovation it can be used uh, to prevent chilling injury and then we have to understanding a ripening process by mathematical model. And uh, one way to maintain the quality uh, post-harvest product uh, for pule pineapple and also matter green tomato by optimization, the storage temperature and time. Okay. And then, uh, well, I would like to express our deepest thanks and gratitude to all the speakers for the inspiring and interesting presentation.
Okay, Dr. Sutiwal Seta and Ms. Drupadi, thanks for joining with us, uh, for sharing your knowledge, and hopefully we can learn something new and increase our understanding and related to, to processing and handling. Actually, we have already prepared something for the speaker. Operator, please. Sorry. Okay, on behalf of the Agricultural Engineering Program, we give this certification, uh, this, uh, we give this certificate of appreciation to Dr. Sutiwal Seta for her outstanding and worthy presentation on the topic of post-harvest technology of horticultural product in Thailand. Uh, in the future, we hope we can collaborate more on research and for academic projects. Yes. Then, uh, then for uh, thanks to Dr. Drupadi for your insightful speech as the speaker in today's general lectures. Please, Dr. Drupadi. Thank you very much. Well, uh, this lecture were attended by more than 170 participants. And I noticed that some of participants are coming from Thailand, Japan, and others, uh, university in Indonesia. We hope you find informative and exciting general lectures. Thank you for being a wonderful participant during this session. I apologize if I made any mistake while moderating this event. Hopefully to see you soon. Uh, finally, let's give applause for the speaker and for you all. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will give back the time to Master of Ceremony, Ms. Afifa. Uh, thank you very much to the speakers and the moderator uh, for this main uh, activity of today's event. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to thanks to Ms. Asri for being today moderator. We also have an appreciation for you to our operator. Please show our appreciation. Okay, here is um, a certificate of appreciation that given to uh, Ms. Mrs. Uh, Ms. Asri Widiasanti for today's moderator. On behalf of the Agricultural Engineering Study Program, I would like to thank you for your today's contribution. And if you have another activity, you are allowed to, to leave the, this Zoom meeting. And once again, thank you, Ms. Asri, for today's uh, moderator. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the next session is another agenda that we are waiting uh, for together. Uh, because I would like to announce that the best participant, based on the best question, and the prize is an e wallet for two best participants with the amount is 50,000 rupiah. Uh, I would like to inform that the best participant that I would like to announce uh, could contact our operator to uh, having next conversation uh, for, for having the, uh, the kind of prize. Okay. Uh, the best participants are okay uh, from Unila, Kiki Sugianti, and Mr. Lukito from Universitas Pajajaran. Uh, for the congratulations for all the winners, I would like to inform you again. You can contact our operator for the next conversation about uh, clearing the prize. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the next session we have, uh, I would like to brief a photo session together, but uh, if you can uh, check the chat, uh, chat box on the Zoom meeting, there will be operator who send the background that you can use while we can take photos together. Okay, the operator could you send the, uh, okay. Okay, if you check the chat Zoom, there will be, uh, background that you can use when we have photo sessions together. So to all the participants, please turn, your, turn on your camera and take position. 
Okay, I will give you some time to open your camera. Okay, there will be a uh, five page on this Zoom meeting. So I hope that you can be patient because there will be five times to take uh, this picture. Okay, if you ready, if you already uh, to take a picture, we would like to brief this photo session. Okay, uh, maybe if there anyone who can turning on the camera, please turning on the camera because we will have this uh, photo brief together. Okay, maybe I will wait until 11.15 uh, for the audiences can turning on their camera to having pictures, to having photos together. Once again, if you uh, didn't have the background picture, you can check through the Zoom chat that the operator has sent the background chat. Okay. Okay, the page one is already filled with uh, audiences who are turning on the camera. I will remind you again, if you haven't using the background from today activity, you can use it uh, by uh, the chat zoom, by checking the chat zoom on the, uh, the operator has sent. Okay, maybe we can brief photos together. Okay. To all the audiences, please stay smiling for five times, the next five times. Okay, the sign is on, the photo will be taken by my sign. Page one is three, two, one, smile. Okay, page two and three, two, one, smile. Okay, uh, if, uh, because the page three is nobody who turning on the camera, we would like to uh, next until the five uh, page. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we already finished our uh, photo sessions and distinguished audiences, we had a productive and inspiring time together on um, this event is about the art of post-harvest technologies in horticultural product. And this event about to come to very end, I hope you find found this general lecture informative, insightful, also helpful. Once again, we would like to express our gratitude to all speakers for sharing such an inspiring lecture. And to the participant here, we would like to convey our utmost gratitude for your participation and support. I would like to remind you that the e-certificate will be sent through your email address based on your answer on the attendance link. So make sure that you fill right email address. Okay, lastly, I want to say have a wonderful day and see you when I see you. I'm Afifa Trinovita as today of Master of Ceremony. Good morning, good afternoon, also good night, wherever you are. Thank you and goodbye. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you.